In this section so far, we have looked at volumes, config maps, and secrets. In this last video of the section, and probably the most interesting one, we will look at stateful sets. The pods created by the deployment and replica set that we have used so far have no identity of their own. All instances of the replica set are identical, and if one gets deleted, another instance takes its place. A pod can store data in a persistent volume, however, the persistent volume does not know what pod has stored data in it. When a pod restarts, it could be attached to a new or existing persistent volume. This is clearly a problem for applications such as, say, MySQL or Cassandra. If a MySQL pod dies, a new pod should have the same network identity and should be associated with the same storage identity. Stateful sets can be used to achieve that. A stateful set fulfills the following requirements. First, the data in a pod should not be deleted even if the pod is deleted. The administrator or user will have to manually delete a persistent volume attached to a stateful set. Second, each instance of the stateful set should have a stable network identity. So when a pod restarts, it gets the same network address. The pods are assigned an identity of the form stateful set name dash number. So if you have two MySQL instances, they would be called MySQL 0 and MySQL 1. When a pod restarts, it may get a new IP address, but it always has the same network address. The address of our MySQL server would be mysql-0.mysql.default.svc.cluster.local. Default is a namespace name and svc.cluster.local is a cluster DNS. Third. Each instance of the stateful set should have a stable storage identity. It should be possible to identify a storage volume based on an ID. Fourth, when a pod is migrated to a different node, it still has the same identity. A fifth feature of a replica set is that it is scaled up automatically, but scaling down usually requires manual intervention. As per the above requirements, a pod would have a stable storage and network identity which means the network address would be assigned to the same backing storage via the pod. You could have a replica set that is persistent storage, but unlike a stateful set, it would not maintain its identity after restarts. Examples of applications that use a stateful set are databases, clusters such as Zookeeper, and so on. The instances of a stateful set are created in order. So MySQL-0 is created first, and once it starts successfully, MySQL-1 is created. Let us now look at a demo of a stateful set that hosts MySQL servers. We will deploy two MySQL servers, create a database in both, and then restart the pods to see if they maintain their identity. The first step is to create two directories on our machine and mount them with Minikube. I will use the VirtualBox Share Directories option to mount the directories to Minikube. Here's how it looks. Restart Minikube for the mount to take effect. Next step is to create persistent volumes using the MySQL directories. Here's a YAML file to create persistent volumes. We create two persistent volumes, one for each instance of MySQL. We name them MySQL1 and MySQL2. The access mode is read-write once, which means only one pod can mount it as read-write. We will specify a storage capacity of 5 gigs for both. We give it a storage class name of manual. The paths are slash mysql1 and slash mysql2. The mysql server docker container requires the mysql root password. We will create an environment variable that can store the mysql root password. Here's the YAML file for creating a secret that contains the mysql root password. The last file that we need is the actual stateful set YAML. Let's step through the file and understand the various sections. We begin by creating a headless service. A headless service is created by setting the cluster IP to none. A headless service creates a DNS entry that points to the backing pod and does no load balancing or proxying. When the pod restarts, it points to the same pod since the DNS name of the pod has not changed. For the service specification, we use port 3306 and the selector is app mysql. We will apply this label to the stateful set pods. Let's look at the stateful set now. It has multiple sections and I will zoom into each section. I'll start with volume claim templates. This is used to create persistent volume claims to bind the persistent volumes that we created earlier. 
we will use the same storage name, access mode and storage capacity that we used to create the volumes so that the volume claims can target those volumes. Here's the main part of the YAML. We create a deployment of kind stateful set. In the specification, we say that this stateful set targets pods that have the label of app colon MySQL. The service name will be used to form the domain DNS. The number of replicas is two since we want two instances of MySQL. In the pod template, we add a label of app MySQL to the pods. This is the same label that we use to select pods in the stateful sets. Next, we look at the pod specification. The first parameter is termination grace period seconds. This gives the pod containers 10 seconds to gracefully shut down before killing them. It sends a sick term signal to the containers so that they know that they have to shut down. We only have one container here called MySQL. The image is MySQL 5.7, port is 3306. In the volume mount, we use the same name that we gave to the volume claim template, which is MySQL dash store. We want to mount the volume at slash where slash lib slash MySQL, since this is the default data directory for MySQL. The last thing is to pass an environment variable called MySQL root password, which is populated by a MySQL root secret. The MySQL server image expects this environment variable and the startup will fail if this variable is not present. It's time to look at this in action. I will switch to the terminal and the first task is to create the persistent volumes. If you want to follow along, the source code is in the Kubernetes underscore stateful sites folder in the GitHub project of the course. Type in kubectl apply minus f mysql underscore persistent underscore volumes dot yaml. This will create two persistent volumes for us. Next, we create the mysql secret by typing in mysql underscore password underscore secret dot yaml. We now create a stateful sets. It is creating the two mysql pods. It will create the mysql underscore zero pod first and only if it starts successfully, it will create the second pod. It has now started both the pods. We will need to connect to the MySQL server at the two pods now. To do that, I'll create a simple pod and install the MySQL client on it. Let's create the pod. To create the pod, we type in kubectl apply minus f mysql underscore client dot yaml. We will now log into the pod using kubectl execute. I use winpty since sigwin has problems accessing terminal without it. We are into the pod now. We need to install the MySQL client. Type in apk add mysql client. This will install the mysql client. We will now connect to the two mysql servers. To connect to the mysql server, we type in mysql minus u root minus p minus h and the server name will be mysql dash set dash zero, which is the name of the pod dot mysql, which is name of the service dot default which is the name of the namespace dot svc dot cluster dot local, which is the cluster domain. For password, we type in the password that we set in the MySQL root secret. We are logged on to the server. Let's create a database called db1 by typing in create database db1. Similarly, we create a sample db2 in the other database. To demonstrate that the identity is minted after restarts, we will scale the MySQL pods to zero so that all the pods are deleted. Kubernetes will delete the last pod first, that is MySQL-1 before MySQL-0. The pods are gone. Let's scale them back up. We change the number of replicas to two and recreate the pods. Let's log into a client again. We first log into the first server and type in show databases. We now log into the second server and the db2 database is there too. The replica set created the pods back and pointed them to the same persistent volumes. The DNS name of the database was also the same. This finishes our discussion on stateful sets. Sometimes choosing between a stateful set or a stateless replica set with persistent volumes that can be reattached can be a difficult choice. For me, I use replica set only if the application requires pod to have identities. This was the last video in this section. In the next section, we will look at authorization and authentication. 
see you in the next section.